Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. I am here with the amazing Alana Israel today. I get to do an interview and we are going to chat about connection as well, especially in the areas of emotional and spiritual well-being. So welcome. And a little bit about Elena. She is a relationship coach and her um, podcast is Partnership Aligned. So make sure that you go follow and listen in. And of course, you can follow on Instagram and all of the things. And you used to be a licensed therapist. So tell us a little bit about where you developed a passion for doing this. Yeah. Hi. Thank you so much for having me on. Um, my passion for relationships and connection and intimacy and all that really just kind of came naturally to me as a kid. Um, I've always, I always wanted to be a therapist. I was like nine years old and wanted to be a therapist. Um, I've always been really fascinated by how two people can be in the same relationship and be having completely different experiences. Um, I've always been really fascinated with what makes people tick and what makes them feel connected to each other and just the way that the human mind works in the area of relationships and connection. So I went on to become a therapist and I, I did some couples work and I did some, I worked in addiction and mental health and a couple other areas as well. Um, and then a couple of years ago, I decided that um, I wanted to make the switch and I started my own coaching business where I uh, work with women who want to feel more connected to their partner. And so now I get to work with clients, um, you know, doing my own thing and not having to, to be a slave to the state regulated laws. <laughs> I love that. I kind of felt the same way. I used to work in the medical field and lots of different therapy and orthopedics and pediatrics and stuff. And, you know, it felt very restrictive. You only have this much time and you can't bill for, you know, other things that you might want to do. And I just developed a passion for coming alongside my clients and patients to empower them more holistically, because the reality is all those other things, the mental, emotional components, the, the gut health and nutrition, all those other th little things have a big impact and um, it makes a difference when you can address, you know, in that way and really um, give people the tools um, for the mental, physical and emotional. So I totally understand that. I love that. So on connection today, I wanted to just chat a little bit. So as far as, you know, the, the emotional components of, of how we connect with the people in our lives, whether that's, you know, relationships, whether that is, our, um, you know, work, our families, all of those things. I wanted to chat about what do you think are the top couple of things, two or three things that are important to remember when we are wanting to connect and have good, healthy um, connection and communications part of that, you know, with the people in our life. What do you think? Yeah, so I think there's lots of things. I think one of the most important things is to tap into curiosity, which means that we have to assume that other people do not think and feel the way that we do. And in order to actually connect with someone, we have to be open to how they're actually feeling as opposed to like putting our feelings on them. So um, there's lots of ways that we can communicate that actually end up in disconnect, like, you know, the need to be right, the need for someone to tell me that I'm right, the need to put my opinions and my beliefs and my emotions on someone. And like real connection comes from intimacy, right? And intimacy is like the shared um, thoughts and feelings between two people with an assumption that both people accept the other. And so in order to do that, like I have to be connected with myself, right? Because Another thing, another answer that I would give you is um, authenticity, honesty, right? I have to be myself in order for you to connect with me. If I can't be myself, then you're connecting with whatever facade I'm putting on and probably not deeply. Um, and so in order for me and you to be able to deeply connect, I have to actually have some vulnerability. And in order to have vulnerability, I have to feel comfortable with myself. I have to be connected to myself. Um, and so as always with all things, it starts with my relationship with me, um, and then transfers into my relationship with you. So true. And I've seen that, you know, so many times, um, in life and everything. And I've found for myself that, um, 
over the years, sometimes without realizing it, maybe I was more guarded and just cautious and not really as open as I maybe thought. Uh, and there's such, I feel like I've learned over the years how to be more authentic and open, especially with people, you know, closely in our lives, you know, family and, and things like that, or people that we work with a lot, you need to have that sort of mutual. And I, and I love that, you know, your podcast is partnership aligned because right. It's a partnership. It's not like one person doing all of this and the other person's like, Oh, you know, whatever, <laughs> you know, it takes, you know, that effort from both sides and it, it's a, it's a team effort, a collaboration or partnership, if you will. Um, and with ourselves is so true, you know, connecting to knowing ourselves, but also connecting to when we're in you know, connecting and communication with people and all of that. Um, if we don't understand why we believe or think X, Y, Z, or where, you know, where is this feeling coming from? Where, you know, why am I having this, right? If we don't understand that, we end up more in like that reactive mode, right? And then it becomes not so healthy a lot of times, right? But when we have more of that understanding for ourselves, this is who I am. This is kind of why I tend to have this or this or this, right? Then as we move into a connection with someone else, you know, interaction, relationship, whatever it is, communication, all of that, then we can have a better understanding. Okay, this is kind of where I'm coming from. So when you say da-da-da, that's why I, you know, have this, you know, feeling or thought or whatever it is. Um, and I found that so, so true. And over the years, I think without realizing it, I didn't really have a lot of deeper connection just because life was so full to the brim. And I just didn't have the mental, emotional or time available to, um, to really be intentional about that. And it was funny, like I just had people in my life that thankfully I had good friends and for the most part um, had really good people in my life. But now I'm in a phase, especially this year, I feel like connection has been such a big theme of being more intentional about deeper, authentic connection and um, actually not necessarily looking, but just being more aware and open to newer connections, which is strange for me because it's not something I've ever really focused on. Um, but it's good. And it's just such an interesting journey. And of course, there's that balance between like, obviously, not every we can't trust everyone with everything in our life, right. But you know, the people that we have a good um, connection with and, and align, you know, and beliefs and that kind of thing to to have that true, authentic, you know, openness. Yeah, of course. I mean, Brene Brown talks about vulnerability. And she talks about how um, vulnerability is the opposite of oversharing. Like vulnerability means that I choose the people that are safe and then I'm open with them. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's such, that's such a good point to remember choosing the people that are safe and then being open. With them. Yeah. That's, that's really, really good. Cause I think, um, you know, and as, as someone and this is very, like, I, I'm very just kind of open in, in a lot of ways in the past, I had a lot of like social anxiety in a way where I was afraid of what the other person would think or say. So I would, that would manifest in the way of just talking and talking and talking and never, never stopping because I didn't know how to stop. Right. So that's another learning experience as we become aware of those kinds of things, then learning to find places to pause and it's okay that there's a little bit of space. It's okay that there's a little bit of time for processing mentally, emotionally, in whatever way it needs to be. And then you can, and learning to ask questions, right? I think that's another piece of that authenticity and connection that you mentioned is learning how to connect to the other person, not just talk about ourselves right? <laughs> and share and ask them, well, like, what was your experience with? Da, 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 or you know things like that absolutely curiosity is like yeah. one of the most important things that I teach I mean the opposite of curiosity is judgment you know so if I'm and not to say that you have to be all one or the other I mean we're human and we're dynamic but the more you strive for curiosity the more judgment naturally fades away that is true yeah and what is that um the thing that people often have happened called a suicide, right? <laughs> people I've never heard that. That's funny. <laughs> right. When we assume something yeah. about the other person, um, 
that usually doesn't go so great, <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, really wrong because we're assuming about them from our lens. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So everybody has their own lens, you know? And that's, I think that's one of the biggest um, helpful tools I have learned over the years is when, when there's a little bit of a conflict going on, a disagreement or misunderstanding to stop, like pause my own, you know, response and emotions and all the things, not that they're not there, but just to take a moment and ask the other person, well, why did you do blah, 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 blah. Okay. Well, why did you feel like you needed to do that? You know, or oh, say that, yeah. like whatever, like, where is the, I need to understand where this is coming from. So I can understand where your heart was, right? Because if I'm just assuming you did it because of whatever I'm imagining, that's not actually what happened, right? But when you can understand the heart and be behind what people are doing, then you are able to, you know, partner together in moving towards a healthier, you know, solution or whatever it is. Absolutely. So, yes, that's a good one. Assume aside. I can't remember where I learned that from, but I was like, it's so well, true. We do, <laughs> we do this. Definitely stealing that. <laughs> it's good. It's very good. Um, okay. So we've talked a little bit about like kind of the emotional aspect. Um, and then one thing I was thinking of kind of talking about was what do you think is one of the biggest hurdles or challenges that you've seen uh, people struggle with in connection and relationships and things and and what would you say is a good tool to help with that oh no oh hands down fear fear 100 okay. percent. yeah fear is what creates like all blockage right fear of conflict fear you're gonna judge me fear you're going to not approve of me, fear you're going to think something specific that I'm afraid of people thinking about me. Mm -hmm. Definitely fear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to tools for fear, um, it's a little difficult to like explain in one sentence, but essentially like thought work, like working on your thoughts and, um, you know, which is something that I'm trained in and like really taking a look at where the fear is coming from, what that fear creates in your life. Yeah. And then making a decision as to whether you want to continue to run your life based on that fear mm -hmm. or whether you want to override it and do something different and see where that takes you, which is still scary, but mm -hmm. it's a different kind of scary. Right. Right. And I think, uh, scary, you know? yeah, yeah. I love that. It's, it's so true. Um, and there are different types of fears, but I think a lot of times it is very common. It's like, well, what if blah, 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 da, 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 right? And I think we have to stop ourselves and ask, well, is that actually what's happening? Is that actually true? Or is this something that I'm imagining? And there was someone I was talking to that she was like, I had to stop believing the stories that yeah. my mind would make up, right? Whatever yeah. it anything and you have to like kind of and one of the best tools I learned was um imagining that there's a door in your mind and when you notice that you're going down a trail of, of of being afraid anxious worried you know what if blah 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 to like start to recognize that pattern in your mind and imagine closing the door and saying no I don't want to go down that road because I know it doesn't help me or anyone. Yeah. Right? And choosing to start to pivot in a completely different direction. And there's different ways that you can do that. I'm sure you have a, a lot of amazing tools to use for that as well. But once you can learn to do that, you can actually develop new pathways in your brain. And if you guys have followed my podcast for a very long, you know, we've talked about that, how you can develop new neural pathways, but it does take a little bit of time. It takes practice, right? Like walking yeah. down the path in the grass, you're, you're making a new path, you're wearing that down and, and, and then the old path starts to fade. Uh, so as soon as you recognize those things, I think, you know, it can make a really big difference. Yeah, that's a really great visualization. And I think another way of kind of doing that same thing is, I, I really like to challenge thoughts. So like if I'm having a thought that's, you know, creating fear in me, I like to say, okay, and what else might be true here? You know? I like that. Or, yeah, or like, what's another way of looking at this? Or how might I be wrong? 
you know, it's all, it's the same question, just said in different ways because yeah. different people's brains take in different questions better, but um, just not even saying like, oh, that's wrong. Like resisting, you know, the fearful thought because what resists persists. So like, we don't really want to try and resist it because it's really just going to come back stronger. What we want to do is just allow that thought to like linger there, but not give it much attention and then kind of come over here and say, okay, and what else might be true? That's good. I like that tool because you're right. You're, you know, some um, people, some everyone has different personalities and and you know background and all that. That can be really helpful to um, to approach it from a different way and instead be like, okay, well, what else? Well, what else? Right? Because there's always two sides yeah. to the coin or more sometimes. <laughs> yeah, and just opening your mind, like expanding to see that there's more than just the way I'm looking at it. You don't even, your second thought doesn't even have to be the correct one. Like just the fact that there's more than one way of looking at it releases some of the fear because, oh, okay, maybe I'm wrong here. Like maybe there's another way to look at this, you know, and and it creates space for, for a little bit of calm. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Okay, so just touching a little bit on, we l- love to share about the soul, the more spiritual aspect of connection and relationships and things. What would you say are a couple of you know powerful tools that help um, deepen connection and produce more health and well being in connection and relationships from that spiritual or soul aspect? Yeah, so definitely meditation. Um, meditation is a practice that helps you really understand what's going on in your brain. It makes you stop and listen. And there's a lot of myths about meditation that drive me crazy. Like you do not need to have a Zen mind to meditate and you are not supposed to feel Zen after meditation. Like that's not what it's about. That could happen once in a while, but really what it's about is just like stopping. We're so busy. We're so on the go. I'm sure a lot of moms listen to your podcast because you are one, right? So like, and even if you're not a mom, like you're crazy busy, but you and I were crazy busy. And it's like, I have to carve out time to stop and pay attention to what's going on with me. Yeah, I have to create a practice where the sole intention is to feel what's going on in my body and listen to what's going on in my head. Otherwise, the stuff that I'm not paying attention to is going to start to run my life. Yeah, I love that. So so meditation is um, my way of connecting with what's really going on inside of me. Mm -hmm. So that I even have the opportunity to ask, what's another way of looking at this? I can't even ask that question if I don't know what's going on, you know? Um, And then for me, you know, personally, spirituality for me has to do with prayer. I, you know, when I pray to God, like I all of a sudden am very much aware that there is something much bigger than me. I am not everything. The world does not revolve around me. Everything that I think is personal is not personal. And therefore I can kind of open up to the experiences of others, you know, and also like prayer and meditation and like anything that's really a spiritual practice, what it does is it brings your baseline down. Mm -hmm. And when your baseline is lower, you can handle more stress and, or just stay calmer. And when you're calm, you're open to connection. It's the fear that that takes us out of the calm it's the judgment that takes us out of the calm like our head you know everything that's going on in our head and when we have a practice that allows for that stuff to be nurtured and worked through through a power that's greater than me then I kind of like clean out my pipeline and Mm -hmm. my channel is clear And then when I come and talk to you, I'm not all up in my head about my stuff and I can actually be present with you. Or maybe I'm still thinking about my stuff, but I actually have some awareness over what it is and I can share it with you. Either way, we'll be able to connect. I love that. And it's like, um, it's like cleaning almost in a way, right? But mentally and emotionally, right? We, how many of you, you know, it's hard to focus when our environment is really cluttered and chaotic. At least that's for me, you know, some people, everyone's different, but a lot of times if we don't clear out that mental and emotional space, it's much more difficult to A, understand what is going on with us. What are we thinking? What are we feeling? Why are we thinking and feeling that, right? 
and then have clarity on how to move forward in a healthier way, right? And of course, you clear out that space, there's more space for good things, right? There's more space for joy, peace, hope, all of that. Um, that's one of my favorite um, things to use for prayer. Meditation is actually scripture. So I'll, I um, I do once a week, we do a restorative uh, session with like stretching, breathing, prayer, scripture, all of that. And that is phenomenal. So any of those tools that you can incorporate, journaling is another great way to slow down and stop and kind of clear out and process. And one of my favorite scriptures that I utilize, and if you don't believe the same thing I do, it's totally fine, but um, is the be anxious for nothing, but we forget some of the rest of what it says. And it is be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer and thanksgiving. So with gratitude, bring your request. So you surrender, you're clearing out, you're releasing what all of that has been going on, all the things, right? You're releasing that, but with gratitude. Guess what? Recent research is showing as soon as we think about gratitude, our brain instantly boosts up our serotonin, our dopamine, all the happy things, right? Right. So instantly your brain and your body are starting to just harmonize for more peace immediately. And guess what the next part says? And then you will have the peace of God that passes all comprehension to guard your heart and your mind. So immediately you're opening up more space for peace and joy and hope and what you need. And then we forget about this part too. And then it says, and if there is anything good, and right, and true, and pure, and lovely. Think about these things. So that's the meditation right there, right? And then think about these things. And you, the God of peace will be with you. So I just encourage you, even if you don't believe in scripture, that is such a powerful tool. Um, it once you can learn to implement that, I think it makes such a big, big impact. Whether that's you take 30 seconds in your day to close your eyes and do that. Um, and I really believe that it's important that we learn to implement some of these tools in a short amount of time. Yes, I love the point about how it doesn't need to be long, right? Because, um, you know, scriptures can be really short but also like meditation can just be really short I always have people start with just like one minute a day and another thing that I really love is breath work and you can do breath work for like a minute you can do the box breath which is like the simplest thing in the world right in for four hold for four out for four hold for four navy seals use it it's so powerful yeah. and you can do that for one minute and feel better. I've had to do that sometimes in between sessions. Like if I, you know, got some bad news that morning or like something's going on um, and I need to be on, you know, and so I'll do a little bit of breath work in between sessions and it'll bring me right back to the moment. So yeah. I'm really appreciate your point about how you do not need to carve out like an hour a day for this stuff. Start really small, start with a minute and then take it from there. But I think frequency matters. True. True. I think I would rather, I would rather people meditate or do breath work or whatever they want to do for like one minute a day than just do it like for an hour on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I 100% agree. It's about building in daily habits, whether that, if that's 30 seconds, that is better than not doing it and then waiting weeks and then trying to, you know, right. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's like, it's like, if you were going to work out, like if I work out for an hour, on every Sunday, as opposed to like, you know, 20 minutes, four days a week, like how, do, where do you think I'm going to get more, you know, benefit. like benefit? Exactly. So it's about building habit and it's about making it become who you are, as opposed to just like something you do once in a while. Yep. Absolutely. It's like yo-yo dieting, right? <laughs> you know, but we don't want to do that. We don't want to yo-yo with really anything in our life because it's not creating healthy, long-term sustainable well-being, right? And that's the same thing for emotional and spiritual and everything. So I appreciate that helpful tool. Those That's so good. And um, I was going to go back to super quick. You mentioned the um, sort of being in a survival mode. You were talking about fear and everything, right? And I think 
fear, a lot of times it's, it's a re response that we have that is a like fight or flight response, the, the fear to, you know, and it could be lots of different reasons that's causing that. And I, I think so many times we have to connect ourselves to understanding where is that fear coming from so that we understand how to address the underlying thing that's going on. And obviously you might need a relationship coach <laughs> to be able to guide you like Alana, uh, or maybe a you know therapist or someone else that's going to help guide you through that process. But taking note of that, and, you know, like we just talked about in bite-sized pieces, you can do that with journaling, meditation, those kinds of things. And, and, you know, I encourage you to write it down so that you can, you know, take more time on the weekend or something like that to really process through or with your therapist or whatever, your um, coach and understanding because so many and many of my clients as well, we are disconnected of all the pieces of like, well, here's my mental well-being and here's my physical well-being and here's my, you know, relationships and all of those things when in fact it is extremely interconnected and if any one area is having a lot of challenges it's going to impact we've even seen if you haven't read the book um, the body keeps score amazing book our mental emotional things going on our stress and all of that it impacts the cells in our body in lots of ways and we don't even know it. We're not aware. And that's one of the biggest things. We're disconnected from what's going on. I've had clients who've said, well, I don't have any issues with my oxygen levels. I don't need to do deep breathing. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Um, so this is not about your oxygen level. This is about your nervous system and shifting from that fight or flight survival mode. I just have to make it through, survive, survive, survive. And then we're reactive and we have fear and we're, we're just riding the waves of fear and anxiety a lot of times, or many people are. And at the whim of, of all of that, not realizing where it's coming from. And that part of it is we're just stuck in a survival mode. When we can learn these tools, like we've been talking about them with the meditation and the deep breathing and the, the emotional, spiritual elements, the awareness, the authenticity, the connection to ourself, we begin to address what's going on and learn how to shift from a flight or flight mode. Cause it's not that it's never going to happen. It's a, it's a survival mechanism that we have and that's okay. Sometimes we need it to make it through <laughs> some things. And then we have to learn how to shift out of that and, and move through it in a different way and then come back into our rest and digest our calm state where our body physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually can function much better. We're connected to ourselves, and then we can have better better connection with other people. So absolutely. Yeah, it's all connected. I mean, you know, breath work allows you to access your your brainstem better and, you know, and, and helps with your immune system. And, you know, I mean, the mind body connection is unbelievable. I mean, I, I could tell you story after story after story of people that I've worked with and me who, you know, God, why do I have so much neck pain this week? Like what's going on with my neck, you know? And then you look back and you're like, oh, I was going through something really stressful. And as soon as that thing is over, oh, all of a sudden my neck is better. You know, it's unreal. When I was in um, college and graduate school, I, every time that I had finals, I would hold it together, hold it together, hold it together, hold it together. And then I would take all of my finals and I'd always get sick right after. Like every time I would like, my mom came to pick me up from college the final time, you know, like when I graduated and it was a five hour drive home. And by the time I got home, I had a fever. Every you've time. Been holding on to all of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like your body knows, you know, finals are not a physical thing, but, but everything is like, everything is interconnected. So true. Well, thank you for joining us today. Um, make sure, like I said, that you check out her podcast, Partnership Aligned and Connect. And of course, as usual, you can connect with me here as well. And I'll put my website and all that if you want uh, to connect further and, and go from there. So thank you again. And hope I get to see you guys next time. So. 
All right. So one last question. I've been just doing a series on women in business. So I would love to hear from you on, you know, if you're talking to someone who's either wanting to get started with some type of business, whether it's online or whatever, or um, trying to start their business in some capacity, what would you say were a couple of really helpful things that empowered you in building momentum and um, getting things going? Um, I think when I stopped focusing and allowing myself to be distracted by some of the little tiny things and focused more on my energy and my intention, I think that's when things really started to take off for me. Um, you know, I don't think that you can start a business with, without some kind of like just stress and inner conflict. I mean, it's just, it's this new thing. It's a totally different beast. Um, but what happens is like, we, we want to feel like we're doing something, you know, like, like we're busy and, and sometimes we allow ourselves to get distracted by some of the little tiny details that really in the big picture don't matter so that, um, we're not focusing on, you know, what is my energy here? What is my mission here? Um, who do I want to serve? Why is it so important for me to serve them? How can I have fun while I'm doing this? You know, when I focus on the energy, um, behind it. That's really when things take a shift. Totally. And speaking of connection, right? Connecting to what is the deeper, you know, purpose, vision, reason why, you know, you're doing this, what, what is driving this? Because as when we can reset and refocus on that, sometimes the little, you know, imperfections and whatever is don't be they're not as important because it's as long as we're moving forward towards that greater mission or purpose then that's what's matter what matters right yeah Yeah. check in with your with your big why you know I mean I know there's all kinds of businesses but I'm in coaching and like in the coaching world like people are like oh man I don't know which colors to use on my website it's like no one cares (laughs) like you know no one cares and while you're using all your brain space on that you know, where, where are you too afraid to look? So that's always been really powerful for me. Absolutely. It's so, so true. It's so easy to get distracted with those little things. I, one of the best phrases I ever came across was better done than perfect. Right. Are you letting like those little tiny things hold you back from actually moving forward and getting it accomplished because it's not perfect? Or are you going to be like, you know what? I did the best I could with the time and resources I had available. And I'm just going to keep moving forward and use it as learning experience. If there's a mistake, I'm going to learn from it. And I'm just going to keep you know, moving forward. And getting comfortable with mistakes, you know, like I've posted things that had typos or whatever, and I'm just like, whatever, you know? Yeah. And because perfectionism is like the biggest obstacle to progress. Absolutely. And I love one of my favorite stories is of um, Edison when he was creating the light bulb and someone like interviewed him and asked, well, how did it feel to fail over 2000 times? He attempted over 2000 times to create the light bulb. And he goes, oh, I didn't fail. I learned 2000 ways that didn't work. And then I kept trying different ways. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah, people who are successful have failed a bunch of times first. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like one of my favorite things is like, don't compare your day one to someone's day 2000. You know, like people Mm -hmm. who are killing it, they were not killing it for a while, I promise you, you know, and they figured it out. So I I think the, the biggest tip I can give to having success is just not to give up. Absolutely. I love that. Not to give up to use those mistakes as stepping stones to move forward. Yeah. 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 Like sometimes, you know, fail on purpose almost like how many times can I fail here? Because the more times that you're willing to fail, the, the closer you'll get to success. Yeah. And something I learned is event, like you, you, you keep trying and making mistakes, but then you also learn how to shift and pivot a little bit too. Like you don't necessarily do the exact same thing 2000 times, right? You know, you're doing like, okay, you have to learn from it. Right. Um, And I think um, in the beginning of my journey, I probably kept trying to do the same thing too many times. So I had to learn how to like, okay, we have to go different, you know, shift and, you know, learn from it. And just knowing that like the quote unquote wrong path is just the path to the right path. Like it's not, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I loved getting to talk with you and I look forward to maybe some other time in the future. 
Awesome. Thanks so much for having me. All right. Take care, guys.